fact that mental health is everywhere, or that Michael Phelps is talking about it on television, that Naomi Osaka was interviewed at the U.S. Yeah. Open, that the cover of Time magazine deals with John Fetterman, the junior senator from Pennsylvania right. who has battled severe depression. Let me ask you what seems like a naive question. Is the fact that it's everywhere a good thing? I'm torn a little on this. Yes. <laughs> I love that there's more awareness about it. That's fantastic. It's something that traditionally people never spoke about. It was under the rug. The problem that I have is that there's so many myths and misnomers out there about it. And so while there might be awareness, everybody thinks they're an expert in it, but it's a lot more complex than we really understand. Mm -hmm. So there are a few myths. For example, that we were, when we were talking about that once you have a mental health problem, you never recover. There is no basis, you no scientific basis, basis. You're exactly. The person I've ever met who said that he right. used to have... But I'm not the only one. Doesn't. I'm not the, the only one. There's tens of thousands like me. In actual fact, when you look at the research, at the studies, up to 68% of people that have got a mental health diagnosis, serious enough to have a mental health diagnosis, recover. Really? Yeah. What if somebody were to say to you, I, I don't want to deny or dispute the validity of the diagnosis, but what if somebody were to say to you, the fact that you've recovered means you were never really bipolar in the first place? I would say that there is not a strong argument for that. It's wishful thinking. And it's interesting because sometimes people like to um, compare a mental health problem to a physical problem. If I said to you, I had a broken bone, and now I don't have it anymore, I've recovered, would right. you question it? Right. So why do we question it with mental health? Mm -hmm. That's a very interesting question. But you are not denying that a legitimate clinical diagnosis of bipolar exists, or of clinical no. depression, no. or of schizophrenia? No, absolutely not. I, I'm not so much interested in the diagnosis, but in the suffering that goes with that. Mm -hmm. And there's, there's an intense suffering and people can get lost in that suffering. And this is where we have to be very careful. When a person has got a severe mental health problem, they can get lost in the suffering and the extreme result of that can be death, which is suicide. Mm -hmm. But in between that, there can also be a lot of brain damage from the medications that they take. There can be a loss of income. There can be the loss of, of a partnership, because sometimes living with a person with a mental health problem is impossible for some people. There can be the loss of the, the impact on the children when their parents have got a mental health issue. Can you imagine how confusing that is for a, for a child? Absolutely. Absolutely. So what we do is it's vital for, for our society because it, it impacts the community. It helps communities thrive. When, when the when mental health is approached properly mm -hmm. from a strength perspective, from a recovery perspective, then we see that communities, workplaces, they start thriving, morale improves. Hi, I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the Workplace Mental Health Institute. We hope you liked the video. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. We have more and more videos being released each week. So when you subscribe, you'll get a notification letting you know when a new one's just been published. So make sure to hit that subscribe button and don't miss out on this vital information for yourself, your colleagues and your loved ones.